All right, so you've seen a couple of the last past videos. I did mention about how I was going to be adding just a, like a random video, right, that probably I haven't even reacted to, or that's kind of out of my realm, right, currently, right? I mean, I'm definitely just trying to, like, pick up random videos and kind of see, like, hey, I wonder what this is about. So, by Generation Films, 10 Flaws with the Starship Troopers Mobile Infantry. As always, the links to the original video and channel are going to be down in the description below, so go ahead and make sure that you check them out. Now, I also kind of clicked on this because I saw Space Marine, right? You know, Marine, Space Marines, Astartes, Warhammer. But this is one of my oh, like childhood favorite movies just because there was something about it. I mean, you had the main character, Johnny Rico. This guy looked like the absolute Chad of his day, right? And then, you know, I, I got to rewatch it. There's, I started thinking about scenes in my head that just did not make sense or things that probably would never happen unless it was... Maybe in here in this sci-fi, because from what I remember, it's kind of more of a like everything about life is more military related in this universe, right? And I only ever saw the first one. I saw a little bit of the second one, and then from what I heard, the other ones were weren't necessarily as good, right? I mean, there's something about the first one that just really stuck with you, or at least it stuck with me. So before getting into the video, though, don't forget to like, subscribe. Really does something a lot. Hit that notification button so you get notified every time I do upload. And without wasting too much more time, let's go ahead and get right into the video. The first flaw we are going to cover starts in boot camp, training. We do see in the films that the mobile infantry recruits do face harsh training practices. <laughs> the federal see, like that, that would never, like, they're still in boot camp at that point. That would never happen. I mean, as far as, like, maybe a, a drill instructor, right, you say, like, an MCRD, uh, like, roughs you up a little bit, I guess, roughs you up, right? Like, they grab you by the collar, or maybe they just kind of, like, push you a little bit, maybe maybe get in your face, start yelling, and you see the spit coming out of their mouth. They're not going to break your damn arm. But then again, I know this is it way in the future, um, different universe. But even then, it wouldn't make sense to do this to someone, right? I mean, it kind of makes you look like a like a deek right but yeah that arm breaking scene man it like now it doesn't make sense as to why that would happen i could understand maybe him getting disciplined in another manner but not in that manner if that makes sense i mean what do you think about right what do you think about it i mean <laughs> federation forces even make pushes to lure the more talented students in the federation to fight for them but overall mi training is not overly specialized and more importantly it often doesn't start at a young age like the great soldiers of history and lore. We see many recruits joining the mobile infantry as young adults, as is common in modern Western armies. To create true sociopathic killing machines, space marine recruits need to be trained young and not be raised in a bubble where they experience suburban education. Because many of the soldiers in the mobile infantry start their career so late, they aren't desensitized to violence or the darkness of war. Instead, we see emotional, mentally weak soldiers. The mobile infantry that was interesting as well. I sorry said, I mean, because obviously when you get like these super soldier programs or, you know, things like that in movies, it's always like they're starting at a young age. So this is also true, like in today's world, right? Um, as far, I mean, because from the video, it looked like they were going uh, from high school or maybe it was college or something. And then they go directly in, right, to the military. Now, as far as uh, people doing that in today's world, right, as far as like getting out of high school and going straight in, you see some people, as soon as they come in and then they don't want to be there anymore. I mean, but, you know, at that point, they send a contract. So, obviously, they're not like, I mean, some people from, like, maybe a military background, right? Parents who are probably in the military might be a little more used to it. Although, you would think, like, things like um, the JROTC, I hope I'm saying right. You know, the guys that go to, like, a military school before joining the military. I've heard a lot of them don't even go because they realize, you know, this lifestyle sucks, right? And then a large percent of them don't go, according to my knowledge from what I know. So a lot of that when he says that also this um, could have like some more m mentally weak uh, like Marines here, right? Which, damn, now that I'm thinking around the movie, these guys aren't Marines, right? Like space Marines, right? No, well, whatever the case, that does happen too. I mean, you know, you get people that get to the fleet and a lot of them start um, getting out well, sooner than what their contract was supposed to be. Infantry experiences fear in the face of the enemy and weak stomachs at the gore of battle. We certainly cannot compare their training and preparedness to special forces like the Halo ODST. And that is exactly why this happens. Okay. 
harsh life lesson. Yeah, she's gonna be just fine. Listen, I'm going to say this early on here. In many ways, the average mobile infantry soldier from the Starship Trooper films is simply unfit to deal with the harshness of war because technology and society has a. I would say war against aliens. Maybe they'd probably do a lot better if it was against people, but I believe in this world, the world is kind of united under one banner. Um, but as far as, I mean, I think anybody would struggle, right? As far as you're going against aliens like this. Although I don't understand the scene. I thought it was, a, I mean, obviously for the movie, you know. Um, when she's, I think she kills a bug, but then there's still one behind her. And she's just kind of like prancing like this. And for some reason, nobody behind her saw the damn other bug that was right behind her, right? I, I don't know. But I think if you're going against aliens, it's a whole different ballgame. Advanced to the point where life is pretty good. Aside from giant alien bugs threatening to wipe out the entire human race. The next flaw is a lack of discipline in the ranks. The mobile infantry is just not a very impressively organized fighting force. Soldiers openly cavort with infantry of the opposite sex and engage in hooligans with little repercussion. This might seem humane, but it's weakness in the face of bug scum. Juan Rico pretty much does whatever he wants in the films. He doesn't act like a leader committed absolutely to the defeat of aliens. When his lieutenant can- That's true, right? He kind of just, I mean, I understand you've always got that main character that kind of acts his own way or plays by his own rules, but doing that in like in a real life situation, it seems like it would get a lot of people killed, right? Right. I mean, you may not be the one dying, but you know, people beside you would probably be dying. Um, where is this? When, what I mean, when you have a lot of people, right? And I'm gonna assume like there's so many people that there's a whole lot of things that can go under the radar, right? Or people try to handle it at the lowest level possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, fighting happens regardless. I mean, I mean, let me tell you right now. When people say, um, if you ever heard of a dog and pony show, or yeah, dog and pony show, I think that was the expression. Any type of branch is going to make you think that they're incredibly 100% discipline, right? You're supposed to be like the higher standard, right? We're not. I mean, that, I mean, that's honestly just the plain truth. I mean, we're still human, right? Obviously, we're not like these little robots, machines, and all that. And you know, we f around sometimes, right? Now, as far as dealing with someone of the opposite sex or same sex, whatever, if you're at a higher rank, right? I, I don't know. I don't remember his rank at this point. But obviously, if you're messing with like someone like that of a lower rank or higher rank, it's going to be fraternization, right? Um, so technically, this would be probably an NJ people, if I remember, right? But I really know how this scene turns out. Catches him engaged in human intercourse on the job, he gives him more time to screw around before moving out to respond to a distress call. That's not a fighting force that believes in a humanity first doctrine and is seriously committed to defeating a superior bug force. Sure, there's some disciplining. Captain Dip gets flogged for getting a fellow soldier killed, but the rules of the mobile infantry seem inconsistent and sloppy at best. I mean, guys and girls shower together in the mobile infantry. What kind of ridiculous oversight is that? This is a core of soldiers that is just as much. Mm, well, I mean, technically in today's military as well, I mean, obviously that part of the gender is still separated, right? Even in boot camp. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, unless there's some creepy guys, right? As far as you get, I mean, then again, I, you know, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna go further much threatened by disarray in its ranks as it is by killer arachnids. If the bugs don't get them, me too will. Up next, we have battle gear. Now, a lot of you in the know are going to say, actually, the mobile infantry gear is exactly what sets them apart from other space forces. After all, their powered suits, as devised by author Robert Heinlein, was foundational in the field of futuristic military fiction. And we are going to discuss that as an advantage in our next video. But for this video, as the powered suits are mostly absent from much of the Starship Troopers film franchise, we are going to look at the standard mobile infantry gear in this video. And such gear doesn't differ much from what we see available to modern day SWAT teams or armies. Mobile infantry soldiers in the films are equipped with a helmet, thin body armor, gloves, and combat boots. Let me just take a quick look. I just realized this was supposed to be a flashlight, right? Or like a light. Why is it so damn big? 
I mean, maybe it's got a way longer reach than what our uh, pick 15s or pick 16s had, but why is it so big? Right? And I also remembered, everyone in this movie shoots from the hip. No one, like, I mean, I don't even think these guns have sights. None of them. This would be fine if the mobile infantry was deployed against human enemies, but they're not. They have to fight aliens. And their armor clearly does little to stop soldiers from being impaled by the bugs or having limbs bitten off. One would think a futuristic army that lives in a world of ubiquitous advanced tech would have designed armor that was capable of protecting its soldiers against the enemy. Of course it's possible. That's true. I mean, obviously you're going against forces that you're probably not used to, so a lot of this is probably going to be adapting or changing things on the fly. So initially I feel like you know, regardless, you're going to lose people, right, getting impaled. But after a while, you know, a lot of their, I mean, at that point, it's not even worth it to have that, I guess, like, flak, you know, their version of a flak or their armor. Because it's not going to do anything besides slow you down weight-wise. Maybe just have a, um, I forgot what it was called, but it was like a little um, LBV, uh, light body vest, I think it's called. <laughs> But think of it like a flag, or you, you know what? You can still wear the flag, but just take out the sappies or the plates or whatever are in theirs that makes them heavier, right? And then just strap as many effing mags, grenades on you, whatever you can. Because if it's not going to do anything, I mean, you're not dealing with people who are shooting at you. You're dealing with uh, things and big numbers that are trying to, like, more stab you or bite you, right? possible that the United Citizen Federation's leaders are just giant a-holes who don't think the cost to protecting each and every soldier is worth it. Okay, I stand corrected. That's a giant a-hole. Naturally, next we have to cover weaponry. The standard weapons used by the mobile infantry are the- Nope, nope, not- Oh, this is kind of a- Kind of like iron sights a little bit, right? Um... At least he's shooting with butt stuck in the shoulder, you know. Um, why does this look like a Halo gun now that I realize it? I swear to God, your eyes better not be closed, though. The Merida Assault Rifle, the Merida 2 Assault Rifle, the E-Pulse 44 Rifle, the Merida 3 Assault Rifle, Combat Knives, the E-Pulse 88 Rifle, Rocket Launchers, and Tactical Oxygen Nukes. The nukes we will list as an advantage and talk about in the next video. As for the rest of these weapons, well, they are fairly advanced. Look at that. Why, why does your light have to be that big? I mean, God. Okay. Uh, I like that they have like a, all of them seem to have like a built-in uh, little radio comm right here. Cool. I definitely see no sights. This would be impossible to aim down with. This, it's so dumb to have a flashlight on top of the gun. I mean... Either put it on the side right here or put it underneath. Yo, I never realized this. <laughs> like, honestly, growing up. Damn. Advanced in practical terms and can be effective in combating the arachnids if a mobile infantry soldier has good enough aim to hit the nerve stem. However, none of these weapons are that impressive or provide the mobile infantry with significant advantage over the bugs. And while most of their guns are akin to modern day firearms, they're actually bigger and clunkier than modern day weapons and provide a huge disadvantage in close quarters combat with giant alien bugs. The ammunition in these firearms isn't even that much different than the ammunition used in standard firearms today. The bullets they use are simply not made for defeating bugs. Okay, so they're definitely using like a higher caliber. I, mean, I don't know what type they're using there. I just realized they were giving the kids like that to guns and giving them rounds. Holy shit. Forgot about that. Our next flaw is tactics. The mobile infantry, along with their lack of discipline, has poor battlefield strategy. In other words, the inferiority of their weapons is only compounded by their crappy tactics. Once again, the mobile infantry's tactics are more suited for human-on-human -human warfare, something that is largely a thing of the past in Starship Troopers. Following the meteor attack on Buenos Aires, the United Citizen Federation launched an attack on Clendathu, the bug's home planet. The results were devastating for the mobile infantry. The plan was to have Federation forces swarm and assault the planet en masse. After securing the initial beachhead, the forces would spread out and eliminate- Did I see that right? Hold on. Where was it? Where was it? Yo, this scene right here. Look how many people are behind this dude. He, the both both of these guys just 
damn near killed the shitload of people behind him, right? I mean, obviously, this might not have a back blast, but I just realized it right now. You know, back blast using AT4. You don't, what is it, 90 degrees by 60 meters. If you're within that range, you're going to get fucking smoked, essentially. Um, but yeah, I keep seeing, as far as um, how you would deal with these arachnids, right? I mean, off the top of my head, I'm thinking you got to just be in the defense, right? I mean, that's probably going to... I mean, because they, they're going to rush you either way. And they got insane amount of numbers. Defense, big guns, all the guns you can. A lot of ammo. Maybe, um... I mean, have some artillery or something, man. Have tanks. Something. I don't think I saw one tank in here in this whole movie. Forces would spread out and eliminate any bugs in their path. The plan ultimately backfired due to the Federation's arrogance and abysmal strategy. In antiquated fashion, they lacked artillery or air support and relied on numbers. They tried to engage in a war of attrition. The poor planning resulted in hundreds of thousands of casualties among the mobile infantry. So many people right there were just aiming their guns and their buddies' backs. And again, at this point, I, you know, remembering again, there's no reason to push them because they're going to come to you regardless, right? including 100,000 killed in one hour alone. Don't get me wrong, I am proud that humanity stood together as one hashtag for Argentina. But the answer to an attack on Earth is not to send half a million mobile infantry on a suicide mission. This leads us into our next flaw, poor governmental structure. Human society in Starship Troopers is governed by a military elite following the collapse of 20th century Western democracies. The world is still rife with affluence as far as we can see, and technological advancement has led to a higher quality of life. However, while ordinary civilians are generally- Also real quick, this is giving me really big post-apocalyptic like, um, Hitler vibes as far as like, just the uniforms in general. Um, I don't know, just something I kind of thought of, right? Really free, they don't enjoy the same rights or status as military members. Governmental leadership positions are reserved for the veterans, and thus military-minded people set the path of society. As we see in any society governed by a military elite, juntas never end well because they fail to understand the need for restraint on militaristic behavior or a balance of ideas in government. This manifests in a United Citizen Federation with a mobile infantry run amok. With war-hungry soldiers at the helm, lieutenants don't hesitate to commit violence against infantry in training or place much value on the lives of their soldiers. Hardening soldiers for war is one thing. Throwing a knife through a recruit's hand and disabling him is moronic. The mobile infantry badly needs the oversight of more politically inclined individuals. Like I said, when he broke his uh the other guy's hand and then uh, i don't know it, it's a different time there i understand there's an elite uh supposed to be like military forces people all that mm. maybe it's to toughen them up and maybe it's because they hey we have the technology to fix you regardless but it's like either doing stuff like that you're gonna create some people that are gonna wanna you know like take you out if they get the chance, right? I mean, I've I've had I've heard stories of people saying that about certain seniors, right? No, I'm not gonna go too far deep into that though. The next flaw is that the mobile infantry is a volunteer force. Now, this is both a weakness and a strength. For today's video, we will consider the aspects that make it a flaw. In the Federation, one chooses to join the military, but doing so is the only way to become a citizen. So there are incentives to do so. Still, the lack of compulsion means that the mobile infantry cannot force the most talented humans among the populace to fight for them. On the flip side, this means that the mobile infantry is going to have to settle for the best soldiers they can get, like Juan Rico, a complete putz. I mean, he gets a fellow soldier killed by taking off his helmet during a live fire simulation. Also, real quick, when she fell down, why was her finger on the trigger? Yeah. Oh, finger discipline. God, that looked really weird on camera. Uh, yeah, don't have your finger in the... And it was on fire, right? You don't take it off of a safe when you're about to fire. But then again, Rico, now that I'm thinking about it, does have a lot of flaws as far as leadership goes. 
Yes, Captain Dip just called for a medic, despite the fact that the soldier doesn't have a head. This highlights maybe the most major flaw of the mobile infantry. It's main he I was gonna say, but because it is volunteer, you know, it's at least, at least you would get people who want to be there. But then again, even like say in the Marine Corps, right? Uh, people volunteering or any branch still ends up being people that realize that hey, they don't want to be there, even though beforehand they said they they did. No, Captain Putts. <laughs> Hero is inept. He has no specialty, no elite skills, and isn't that intelligent. Whereas many elite soldier forces are defined by a heroic figurehead like Master Chief, the mobile infantry is stuck with Johnny, it's that time of the month Rico. He almost quits the mobile infantry, a force he only joined because of a girl due to the helmet incident. This is an intensely weak-minded person who will go on to become a general. Such is reflective of a very flawed professional ladder. Next, we have the mobile infantry transport vehicles. In the film Starship Troopers, the main vehicle used for space travel by the UCF is the Corvette transport. The Corvettes were often used to deploy dropships which carried mobile infantry platoons. The Corvettes are fast, but along with the dropships they transport, seem to have weak defenses and lack much in the way of offensive combat capabilities. The Corvette dropships suffered heavy casualties during the first Bug Wars and were easily brought down by the Bugs during the first Battle of Clendathu. Again, the transport vehicles available to the mobile infantry don't seem suited for battle against the alien enemy they're fighting. But then again, I mean, you can't really put that on them because I feel like, you know, how would they know? They're kind of doing this on the fly, right? Uh, but I, I am surprised as far as like, how the Bugs were able to aim that perfectly, right, into space. And I also realized in one of these pictures, don't remember which one it was, but I think, yeah, right here, at the 10 minute mark. A lot, why are a lot of them so close by each other, right? I mean, obviously, you know, keep your distance just because that's kind of like the same thing to say for patrolling on foot, right? Like in today's world, we try to keep 15 meters, right? Because someone throws a frag at us, right? It's not going to get a whole bunch of people. It might just get the one. And a lot of these guys are just really close to each other. Just really like that. So they wouldn't have to be as accurate as far as like the bugs go. Because they just gotta kind of shoot in that general area. And laws of probability or whatever. Something's gonna get hit. Fighting. And finally, our last flaw should be rather obvious. Despite the mobile infantry existing in a world of advanced technology, as we've previously discussed, they largely fight the gigantic bugs on foot. They don't use much in the way of an air force or ground vehicles, and in the films, don't have exoskeleton suits that give them enhanced abilities in warfare. This seems almost ludicrous, yet the lack of an alternate means of engaging the enemy is a catastrophic flaw. In other words, there is a degree to which the mobile infantry is at a technological disadvantage. Okay, citizens, it's time to vote. Click right up here in the left-hand corner and rate the mobile infantry on a scale of 1 to 5. You will have another chance to rate the mobile infantry after my next video highlighting their positive aspects. And Go ahead and talk about that for a minute. All right. So, as far as my scaling of them, I mean, make sure to make your own scaling too, like 1 to 10, 10 being great, 1 being not so great. If it was in terms of fighting other people, it would probably be in the higher, um, maybe seven to eight, right? I mean, obviously, because, you know, there do seem to be some flaws, right? As far as uh, just one, where was that list? Where was that list? As far as the training, just, eh, I, I, I don't think it would it, it'd necessarily be great to, like, harm your own dudes or who people who would be your own, like, you know, people. Just because, you know, again, creating that little, um, what's it called like they wanted to get back at you right and discipline as far as like the friendization part um you know because obviously when people do that you know these it is a way to get up go up and rank and then obviously you're taking spots from other people who probably deserve it a lot more and probably be in a way better leadership position um other than that everything like the gear weapons tactics government volunteers <laughs> i don't know about uh rico a lot of these things would have been great against other people but i feel like that was because why they got accustomed 
to just fighting this way and not, I guess, advancing or trying to develop new things, especially when you're going against a force that you don't know how they're going to react right towards you. But if you're consistently doing the same thing, like when they were doing, um, like when people in today were fighting in trenches, right? And you're just sending people over there to no man's land and they, they keep getting gunned down. You're like, oh, I wonder if we do it the sixth time, it's going to work, right? Um, I don't remember seeing anything of them actually learning, like, hey, maybe we should switch up things a little bit. Maybe we should use more air assets, right? Instead of just doing everything on foot. On foot, I understand if they have a lot of people, you know, you know they can afford to spare, spare some, right? Kind of like in Warhammer. Um, but not, 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 not. As far as raiding them against uh, the Arachnids, I'd probably say, like, they're definitely in the lower, like, two or threes i mean they managed to get the job done but you know a lot of people died and you got a lot of people this seems to be like a lot of people kind of doing things their own way right instead of acting together it seems like there was a lot of acting individual but i mean that was just kind of my take on it let me know what you thought how, how, how would you rank them in two ways as far as them going against like people right or going against um an alien force obviously that they don't know how they're going to react but in any case let me know that down in the comments below thanks for watching this is kind of one of those videos it's kind of from left field a little bit but thanks for being patient and as always i'll see you all in the next video